Here we have a Fender Twin Reverb. I'm gonna guess 72, 73, somewhere in that area. See the master volume has the pull switch for the terrible sound. And it's got the fan stock clips instead of bolts that go all the way through. And so they had to add screw holes in the back and additional screws to hold the amp in so it didn't fall out. This is more um, cutting the product for more profit that they did in that era, uh, as they were losing money anyway. But anyway, it's silver face, twin reverb on the bench here. And uh, I'm gonna turn it around and show you some of the other features from my favorite vantage point. But if you look underneath, you'll see we have a huge power transformer right here. And uh, it's much longer than a dollar bill would be folded up, so you know it's one of the bad ones. Uh, there's no choke. It's been removed and replaced with a resistor. Boo! And there's the output transformer right here in the middle. It's a good handle to pull it out. The cover for the filter caps, it can kill you. So what we're going to do is discharge this amp and then take a poke inside. All right. This is the vantage point that I use to work on it. Mainly because the on-off switch is right there, should I need it. This amp is safe to work on. It's been completely discharged. All the high voltages are gone, dissipated to the metal in the chassis, or earth ground, even better. Uh, here's a back view. This is where the lamp was we saw before. Right here is the master volume with the pull switch that switches in this bright cap and does some other hideous things downstream to the tone. But this is one of the later 120 watt, no, 135 watts is what they claim, into 4 ohms, 135 watts. It also has an ultra linear output transformer, which has an extra wire that goes to the screens of the power tubes, which is really for hi-fi. Sounds great for a hi-fi, not so great for a guitar amp. Uh, but they found that out pretty quickly uh, as sales dropped dramatically. A uh, few things, you see these Pakistani caps that are not that great. You see the changes here they've made to the phase inverter uh, from the CBS era. And they take the signal here where the two channels come together, send it all the way over to the master volume, right by the power transformer. And then come all the way back from the master volume back to where this wire should just go to, from here to here. So you can imagine, it adds a lot of noise to send it that way. Uh, but that's what they chose to do. Uh, it's, it's all original, which in this case is not a good thing. Um, you can see starting over on this is the normal channel that doesn't have the reverb and tremolo, so this is very simple to look at here. And right here, first thing I notice is there's no tube. Someone has removed the tube from that channel because they probably just didn't use it. It's really dirty and sticky. There it goes. No tube. Uh, interesting, somebody couldn't tell the reverb wires apart, so they made a little note for themselves. Uh, back to it. So, just from here, right there, over, is the normal channel. That's all it is. One tube and this assortment of caps and resistors. Really simple and fat. So, if you ever play through these amps, don't be afraid to try that channel. It'll sound a lot richer, because it doesn't go through all this additional reverb and tremolo circuitry here. So, uh, there's some things that I would do to this amp just to uh, clean it up, make it sound better, uh, replace some caps that are critical, like these two coupling caps uh, are known for failure. They can cause motor boating, they can cause bias loss, which will eat your, all your power tubes at once. So, it's a good idea to, to deal with that. Um, other than that, there's nothing horribly wrong. There is this other CBS mistake. If you look at the circuit, there's the normal tube that's missing. There's the preamp tube for the reverb and tremolo channel. This is the preamp tube that drives the reverb tank. It goes down to a little transformer, up to these jacks, and out to a reverb spring. Well, the cathode that's tied together that, dry, that tells how hot, hot that tube's going to run goes to this resistor right here. And this was a big mistake, Fender. First, they eliminated this cathode bypass capacitor. There was another one right here on this resistor. And this is uh, reading at a 680 ohms. 
I believe I'm reading that right. But um, the original Blackface amps had a 2000 ohm resistor. So what they're doing here is they're trying to hot rod the reverb and drive it really hard, which makes sense because Marshall was getting all their professional market sale at the time. It's, they probably had a meeting and said, what do we have that they don't have? And they said, reverb. Okay, well, let's make the reverb in your face. So this circuit, when you use the reverb, you could just breathe on the reverb knob and you're in a cave on the other side of the world. So not really versatile. Also, it runs makes this tube run really hot and ends up cooking this tube, and eventually it can take out this little drive transformer that's connected to the tube. That's a mistake that can be easily fixed. Uh, and as you've all heard about filter caps, let's look on the other side and see what the filter caps look like. All right. Now we're looking at the bottom side of the amp. Some people call it the top, but this is a twin reverb. It hangs upside down. So right here, I noticed right away that these 6L6s are um, were specially made for uh, their Super 6s. And uh, I believe some PV amps shipped with these. But, uh, yep, this has a PV logo on this side. So these were pulled out of a PV amplifier, probably after they were pretty toasty, and stuck in here to work. And a side note, when I checked the fuse on this amp, it had an 8-amp fuse. Let's see, it calls for a 4-amp slow-blow fuse. So, danger, there was probably a problem it was blowing the fuse, and just to sell it, they put a bigger fuse in it, which happens all the time. Uh, you can see a lot of filth. This was this was outdoors or in a garage or something, a, a barn for a long time. You can see all the dirt under here. I uh, found a few spiders, too. Uh, but let's look under this hood. This is the cover for the filter capacitors. And these are all original, even though one doesn't match. They were using different parts at this time they used whatever they had in the bins and these are the two bias capacitors and uh, these are filter capacitors which are oriented differently than they would be on a blackface amp so you gotta always look at the plus and the minus on here but what do we have here oh look at that isn't that ugly yeah that's a popped pimple on the main filter capa capacitor these two are in series these are also huge they're 220 microfarad because Marketing eliminated the choke. It used to go right here. And so they had to use more filtering here. So, And it's kind of not good for the design. But anyway, it's done. And uh, this is uh, these are good for about 12 years. So this is, let's see, 72, 82, 92, 2002, 2012. I'm counting in decades. They're all worn out. Of course, they're all worn out. So these need to be replaced. And this is very likely the reason that this fuse blew and or completely shot power tubes, plates, etc. So that's this amp in a nutshell. I may do a, another video as I dig into it or do an after video. We'll see. But again, this power transformer, if you're looking for a twin reverb and you roll up a dollar, which I don't have. Here's a Q-tip. You know about the size of a Q-tip. It's big. It's really tall. And it is a hand-wired Fender amp, so I have restored some of these over the years in Nashville. And I actually just put a stock replacement power transformer, like you would put in a blackface, and I put a stock output transformer, non-ultralinear, and these amps sound wonderful. Because then they're blackface Fender twins at that point. All right, that's it.